everyone! For today's video, I'm really excited that I have the Canon R5 in my hands and I'm going to be bringing you guys a real-world review of what it's like using this camera out in the real world on a photo shoot. So today I'm going to show you guys some IAF autofocus examples. We're also going to be doing a portrait photo shoot on location where I'll share with you guys my raw, unedited photos at 100% crop so we can see all the details of the photos that this camera produces. We're also going to be doing a little bit of video stuff as well and we're also going to do a low light test. So I have two lenses that we'll be using today. I have the Canon RF 50mm 1.2 and I have the Canon EF 35 5mm 1.4 Mark II and I'll be using the RF to EF converter to be able to use that lens on this camera body. So I thought it would be nice to have a little bit of both to test out the autofocus and things like that. So today's model is Alana. Lydia has done her makeup and Dan is behind the camera filming. Before we get started, I wanted to talk a little bit about the physical body of this camera. I feel like the body itself is a little bit larger than the EOS R. I used that a few months ago, which I'll have some videos linked down below if you guys want to watch. And I do feel like this is a little bit bigger. It feels pretty good in my hands. It's got like a sturdy hand grip that I like. I do feel like the body itself is quite light though, especially paired with an RF lens. It's kind of front heavy when I'm shooting, which is a little bit uh, weird for me to get used to. First and foremost, we finally have dual card slots on the R5. So this has an SD card slot and also a CFast Express Type B slot. If you use the CFast Express card, you get the full potential of this camera being able to film in 8K and getting all the options available for you as well. Another thing that I really like about the R5 is they brought back the joystick. I absolutely love shooting with the joystick. The EOS R had like a weird slider thing, which I think is more used if you shoot with the EVF. I personally love shooting with the LCD, so I was just using the touch screen. But I do like the joystick just to make very minimal adjustments to my focus point while I'm shooting. I just feel like it's so much more efficient and I just really like it because pretty much all the cameras that I use have a joystick, so I'm quite used to it as well. We still have the good old flip out screen and we also have a top monitor as well which I kind of understand using that for a DSLR since you're looking through the viewfinder the entire time. For me personally on a mirrorless I don't really use the top screen at all since I've got all the settings and everything I need to see on the LCD and inside the EVF. The other thing that I noticed which is kind of interesting to me is that the CF card cover is not seamless with the camera body which I quite like it when it's seamless. This one has a lot of kind of beveling and stuff like that. So when you look at something like a Fuji body or a Sony body they're usually quite seamless which I really like. And then all the buttons have nice texture to them as well so you can really easily kind of twist them around because when I'm shooting weddings in summer at 40 degrees celsius heat um, my hands get kind of sweaty so it's hard to move buttons around so I like that they're super grippy. The other thing that took me a little bit of getting used to is that the joystick is quite high up on the camera body. I'm used to it being kind of here-ish in the body, so a little bit lower. So it took some getting used to having my thumb automatically go all the way up to the top of the camera body to move my joystick around. All right, so let's get into the IAF tests. I have the Canon R5 connected to the Atomos Ninja 5. So I currently have it in video mode so you guys can see the overlay of the IAF and I'm gonna walk in front of the lens running backwards and forwards, side to side, and we'll see how it looks. First up, we have the RF50 1.2, and next we'll have the EF35 1.4 Mark II. The R5 autofocus and IAF is absolutely amazing and is able to track eyes throughout the frame with ease. I was trying out a few fun things to try and make its life a little bit difficult, but I found that it was pretty on the money the entire time, only struggling a little bit such as when I was walking side to side and a little bit slow focusing from infinity to close up when I was jumping into the frame. I would say the IAF is very similar to my experiences with the Sony a7R 4 
Okay, I get you sitting just up here on one of these. Maybe that one looks cleaner. Yeah. So I'm gonna be taking some portraits now on the RF50 1.2. And we're just here with a little bit of backlight and kind of in the shade as well. And I've got IAF turned on. Oh, that's nice. They're kind of like leaning over. didn't skip a beat while we were shooting stills. Pretty much all the photos I took were tack sharp, especially when there wasn't a lot of movement. Using this camera at a photo shoot feels very efficient and I felt like I was super quick while taking photos because I knew what I was getting was in focus. There is no doubt the R5 and RF50 take amazing photos together. For me personally, the only downside is the ergonomics of the super heavy RF lenses paired with the light R5 body. It was tiring using this camera for a few hours straight with it being very front heavy. Yeah, I'm gonna get some landscape ones, kind of mid-length body ones. I ended up moving to mirrorless so I can have a lighter rig with the a7 III as I use two cameras on me at a wedding for 8, 10, 12 hours a day. Something I found kind of funny is that my 5D4 with the EF50 1.2 is lighter than the R5 and RF50. I personally like to find that balance between ergonomics plus comfort and image quality when looking for a camera body slash brand to go with. Uh, just taking these photos there, I love what the R5 screen looks like. It's so crisp and clear and like the colors look really beautiful on the back of the screen. Uh, yeah, that's all. I love it. <laughs> all right, so now we're going to do a movement shot on the RF50 with Alana walking towards me and me walking backwards. <laughs> Perfect. So now I've switched over to the EF 35mm 1.4 Mark II and I'm using the adapter and I'm going to take a few portraits on this to see how the autofocus is and the image quality. That was pretty. The EF 35 focuses as fast as the RF lenses with my experience. In the 100% crop images, you can see that the photos don't have quite as much detail as the RF lens, but the photos are still super sharp. Can I get you to take a tiny step towards me? Yeah, perfect. So this is the movement shot on the 35 EF lens. Three, two, one. Okay, now it's time for Dan to get some video footage for you guys and Miss Shaky Hands over here, AKA me, is going to film some behind the scenes on Dan's giant filming camera. So first we're gonna get some 8K shots. So just 25 FPS. So now we're going to do the exact same thing, but C log. And we'll walk a little bit.
So now we're going to do 4K 100 FPS. So we've got a shutter of 1 over 200. ND filters come up because it's quite dark right now. So I'm just going to start off with the close-up. Again, looking at this video footage, there is no doubt that the R5 also produces beautiful, high-quality video. The IAF kept up really well throughout all these tests. The downside to video on the R5 is user usability. I don't want to get into it too much as there are so many videos about this already, but be sure to read up on all the timing limitations on each of the video settings to make sure that you are able to film what you need if you are after the R5 as a hybrid camera. So we waited until nighttime and now we're at the harbour and I want to do some low light tests on the R5 and take some photos of Dan with some different ISOs and put all the photos up one by one so you guys can see all the difference in noise. I'll also show you what the full crop of the photo looks like but I'm going to show them all to you now at 100% because this is usually the percentage that you should be looking at photos to see noise, to perform noise reduction, to add sharpening to your photos. So. 100% ISO, here we go. So we found this spot, which I think will work for the low light photos. I found two street lamps that are kind of close together. So that'll be the fill light for Dan. And then we'll have the harbor and the lights on the water in the background. I was really impressed with the low light capabilities of the R5. The noise wasn't as bad as I expected. If you guys want to see me compare this camera in low light to another camera, let me know what you would want to see in the comments. So that is all we have for today's real world review of the R5. I really hope you guys enjoyed that and found it helpful seeing a few different aspects of how this camera performs in a real world photo shoot situation. I would love to know what you guys think of the R5 down in the comments below. Yeah, let me know what you like, what you don't like about it, if you're getting one, if you pre-ordered, if you're waiting for it to arrive. I'm, I really want to know what you guys think. Also, I'm going to be filming a couple of other videos on the R5 as well, so stay tuned on my channel because there will be more photo shoots on this camera body coming really, really soon. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.